Reality NSFW Survivor Season 42. We're talking episode number five. I'm Lauren. She's Sarah. And today we are joined by the wonderful Rita from Survivor Fiji in the building. Rita, how are you? I am so good. I was about to, first of all, what I love your intro. That is fabulous. And I had already rehearsed one. I was going to be like, but probably you guys are too young to recognize, but I was all ready to start it with, oh, yes, it's ladies night. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh, yes, it's ladies night. Oh, what a night. Oh, what a night. Okay. So, anyway, <laughs> I don't know if you know that jam, but I was like, oh, hey. Oh, yeah. Oh, we know oh, it. Yeah. We know it. Oh, yeah. We got you. We got you. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, thank you so, so, so much for having me here tonight. I am so excited. Behind the scenes, I was telling Lauren that originally I was going to say, wow, what a coincidence. Because if I went on counting the amount of days that Survivor originally lasted, I thought, wow, this is so apropos. Because those of you who are listening, I was going to be on last week and a bunch of things came up and I couldn't make it. But then when I realized, okay, it's going to be the following week. Wow, that's even better. Or so I thought, because I'm like, wow, this adds up with I'm going to be on, on kind of the episode at the juncture where I exited the island, to put it nicely, because just remembering those words, those famous last words oh. that signify oh. that your torch has been, uh, you know, the tribe has spoken. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to ever hear or say those words again. But then, as I was telling Lauren, then when I started watching the episode, it reminded me again of like, Oh my God, I'm still not over how upsetting it is that like the change in the amount of days. I'm like, wait a minute. I thought they'd be on day 15 by now, but mm. no, they were on day 10. So I was like, oh my God, I was so upset. I was like, wow, I would have been on for like at least two more episodes after that if our season had been structured the way it is i'm like you guys are so lucky <laughs> so anyhow, that's how i uh began but um let's get going i don't know if you guys have any specific reactions or questions for me and and to see my reaction or i can i'm glad to start off with my uh, my thoughts and reactions. Well, I will say, give us your overall thoughts of the season thus far. Like, how are you thinking of some of the players currently, who you're rooting for, all of that? Well, I think I started off, like, probably majority, including Jeff, I think. Just, you know, overall. And I also know Dalton from uh, Entertainment Weekly, whom I adore. He was such a supporter of uh, Lip Gloss Rita on my season that I <laughs> will never, I'm like, oh, I love him. But anyhow, um, so much support for Marianne uh, in, in her, that was my initial reaction. And I still feel uh, strongly about her. I think she's really sincere about her reactions. I just think it's wonderful to see someone who loves, you know, who sincerely loves and appreciates, I feel like every every second of uh, of being on there. Um, although interesting in this in this episode, I noticed her kind of getting a comfort level and not I don't know how to say that a reaction not so much as a fan of the show, but now as a, a participant. Uh, confident participant of the show. Like when she reacted, um, it shocked me actually when she reacted when um, is, I think it's Jonathan, right? He was chopping mm. and, you know, accidentally hurt her and her reaction, like, like super shocked me. You know, when she said something like you're in my workspace, I'm like, well, kind of like the whole Island is ours. There's nobody owns any, you know, specific sectors. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize I was in your office <laughs> at that point. And I, I commend Jonathan's reaction tremendously. I mean, he just more and more um, is, is really, I think, playing a fantastic game, um, giving thought to all the different, you know, outwit, outlast, outplay to all the sections 
that are necessary to create a survivor winner. Um, Mm -hmm. Someone that all of a sudden has kind of come up forward for me from day one, you know, for obvious reasons, I've been a huge supporter of Romeo because of so many reasons we're both, you know, Miss Mm -hmm. Venezuela on this end, Um, (laughs) beauty, beauty queen myself and also beauty pageant coach myself. Um, we're both Latin. Uh, we both have that story behind, you know, coming to the United States, our parents uh, emigrating here from other countries. So I'm still a strong uh, rooter for uh, Romeo. But um, again, new players are are coming out like Drea. I mm-hmm. loved her in this episode. I really identified with her when um with the potato mm-hmm. description with the potato oh, yeah. <laughs> that i i totally related to that i think i put on my instagram um and here's a like shameless plug for my instagram at <laughs> tv okay so i did a recap uh on there i think it was a couple of episodes ago where I talked about how when before getting on the show and and I was mentioning this to Lauren earlier that when the producers are prepping us for the show, they'd basically have us, you know, um, binge watch Mm -hmm. every season while we were in that kidnapping stage uh, prepping to be interviewed to see if we were even, uh, you know, made the the finals. It was at that last stage of interviews. uh, And I remember watching and couldn't understand why people would just get so like overly elated when they finally found some kind of food. I just thought they just was, it was over-exaggerated until Mm. it was me. And and there we were on like day three, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're out there literally after 24 hours of not having eaten or drank anything, it's crazy how quick, that hunger and and um and thirst start setting in so much quicker than you can imagine that's when you start to realize wow at least for me because i'm used to really having my three meals a day Mm -hmm. that's how i keep my metabolism healthy that's how i you know praise god i've been able to stay you know fit and trim so to speak mainly by just not messing with my metabolism so that and exercise of course um but when you're out there after 12 hours of not eating anything, when you're used to eating something at least every six hours, wow. I mean, your stomach starts to devour you, you know? So after Mm -hmm. three days of that, as you remember, I was on the have nots tribe. Wow. I thank you. Thank you for remembering Lauren. Thank you. It was, I'm sorry, but that, that twist was brutal to watch. It was so unfair, so totally uneven, and we just were never a- ever able to to catch up. It was impossible to catch up, starting from, yeah. from nothing. But then, ironically and wonderfully, you know, the end result was someone with nothing is the one who ended up winning it all. So that was kind of like a probably what the the whole point of it to see you have to have come from a lot or, or nothing and 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 be able to win. But anyhow, the potato thing reminded me of when we found when Erica found the pineapples and I kid you not. It was so funny because I remember when, again, when I was, that's why it's like, be careful uh, there, but for the grace of God, you know, be careful who you make fun of (laughs) because too that I would make fun of people making such a big deal about finding something out there. And then when it was me finding when, you know, Erica, we had like three pineapples for the whole tribe. And we went ballistic. Like when I see that episode playing back and we were like doing the pineapple dance, we were like, oh my God, like we had found cheeseburgers and fries. It was just amazing. But then the survivor again, reality and how everything is so much harder out there than than you could ever imagine. So we finally, you know, take the pineapples apart and we have to share those three. They were wild pineapples. I think they were that big, tiny. And we had to share them with the whole tribe because if you didn't, then you know you're gonna get voted off because you didn't share with everybody. And when we started eating, I think we ended up maybe we could each have two pieces of pineapple per person. And after the second piece, all of a sudden I was like, oh, uh, we were all like, oh, uh, I can't. 
Wow. Out that wild pineapples are kind of an anise has to have an anesthetic quality to them. Interesting. So it made our tongues fall asleep. And I'm like, oh my God, are you kidding me right now? We haven't eaten anything in three days. We're finally so excited to have a little something. And and we're having this result. So really, really, whatever is so much different, the reality that's out there mm -hmm. because pineapple in like not wild form is actually an anti it's the op i think it's the mm -hmm. opposite it's like an anti-diuretic it's an anti-inflammatory but out mm -hmm. there it is an anesthetic and so but so dre i could relate to the potato that you're like oh beautiful <laughs> amazing so mm -hmm. um yeah so what else nice. let me see well, if we even want to, we can even run through the episode and we can even see what our what your thoughts yes, are like throughout. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Um, so I, I know we started, we were talking a little bit about the beginning, which I mean, really had to do with Marianne, Jonathan, I feel like was kind of the whole beginning of the episode. Yeah. And, you know, I agree with you, Rhea, from what you were saying before, I was very surprised to see Marianne's reaction, um, the way that she act. I don't know, I just didn't expect that from her, but I also... <laughs> Do commend Jonathan for being able to keep this cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I could have. <laughs> yeah, no, I really, really commend because he even mentioned it, and and I just thought it was again. He said, "You know what? I'm just gonna. Uh, it, it's I. Um, I identify with it because I, I I I try to be that way, and I really believe very much in." You know, when, when someone comes at you with such a, a negative energy, you just shield yourself by saying, you know what, I'm just going to return it to you with love because that's my essence. That's who I am. And so that's who I'm going to be under all circumstances. And that's actually, that's something that I'm really proud of myself in my participation on Survivor is that I always was able to, you know, stay true to those values that my dad and my mother uh, instilled in me that my faith in God uh, gave me that I just said, I'm not going to, I, I'm worth all those things. That's my integrity. My integrity is worth more than a million dollars doing something uh, nasty that goes against my, uh, my nature. So I, that's why I really commend uh, Jonathan's reaction that showed, I believe that showed that his true colors and his true nature uh, were reacting with you know respect and kindness yeah uh, because again i don't think it merited marianne's reaction was strange to me because she also always seems to be so understanding and and she always seems to react so happily to yeah. everything but then you also as you're watching it you also forget the starvation yes and dehydration factor and and that's an example of how you know not being a hundred percent uh, hydrated and fed can somewhat mess with your with your persona, you know? Yeah, and yeah, I would bring that up and think about this too. Had that happened on maybe day three or something, her reaction could have been much different. But as mm -hmm. they progress through the game, then she's in the state of mind, like you get triggered and freak out a little bit more than you technically would. But Jonathan's persona and being able to stay calm, cool, and collected through that entire segment was great. And also we got that confessional, just showcasing his self-awareness by how other people would perceive if he were to have reacted a different way. Yeah. And also that's, that's right. And that, that confessional, not only how others would perceive, but I was impressed with his, how he would perceive himself. He was saying, I, I don't want to be that person. I'm not, you know, imagine not only how it would make me look, but ultimately even his actions spoke louder than the words that he, that he pronounced in that confessional because he ended up giving more worth to how he would feel than to how he would be perceived. Um, yeah. But regardless, I think that he, you know, he really, really is playing a, a very smart game um obviously he's very useful and and then you know going into the ocean and 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 saying i'm going to detach myself and and mm -hmm. and take advantage of being out here and everything that out here has to offer but speaking yeah. of that i want to <laughs> speak to the moment when how different when uh daniel yes i was actually that's what i was i was just about to bring that up with daniel anyway when daniel went into the ocean 
it just shows you, I love that, um, that they somewhat showcase that Mm because that is really shows a really a reality, no pun intended of how difficult the game of survivor is in that instance, because here I, I sincerely believe he was trying to do something useful. Uh, we had hoped to come back with something for the tribe and made this effort to try to do something useful and then look at how it was being perceived. I don't know if I really blame them though, honestly, because for oh, no, I don't blame them. Yeah. <laughs> Cause especially if he's saying he can't do swimming challenges, but he can go out and get fish, which at first when I didn't realize that, but at first I was like, why are they complaining? Sometimes like swimming is really good exercise when you've hurt yourself. But yeah, then made the point of like, he's been trying to sit out of swimming challenges. I'm like, ah, I get it now. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't blame them, but it's so, and again, it just depends. It yeah. totally depends on the personalities because had it, maybe the reaction could have been what I just said. Maybe the reaction could have been like, oh my God, that's so cool that he's making an effort, even though he's hurt. And yeah. he's still out there trying to, you know, participate in the way in even in the small way that he can, because May challenges are too, you know, demanding and could put him at risk. So yeah. we get it that he can't participate in those, but at least he's trying to make an effort out here. So see, it just goes to show you how hard it is because if you're you're playing that game, you're gonna use any possible means that you can to get ahead. And at that point, Kai was you know, was doing that. What, Mm -hmm. oh, wow, he's doing this. How can that be used to my advantage to get ahead in the game? Oh, I know if I create this picture of, hey, you know, it's unfair. Did you notice that he's doing this? So that was brilliant on Mm -hmm. on Kai's, uh, and and it's too bad that Daniel was not able because you, I think you would agree that if he had come back with, you know, a fish or two, a shark or two, they would have been like, hi, what up? They would have you know, <laughs> probably all forgotten all that, all that. Oh, you know what? You can sit out all the challenges you want, honey. It's fine. You know, you brought home a shark. It's good. You but know? One, <laughs> and one thing I really love that he said during that whole little montage is he talked about how sometimes people take it too seriously and you're on this great adventure and you really should have fun with it and enjoy it for what it's worth. And I think sometimes we don't see that always on the show. I think they're doing better with this season by showing some of that like camp life and more fun. But I remember in like old seasons or older seasons, they would show like people All doing fun things, things like the fashion show and other yeah. things and um, it's cool to see that and um, so it was cool to hear him talk about how just having fun is really important in the game of survivor yeah that's true because it is a once in a lifetime experience and 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 most of it is grueling so when you can get those moments of of you know enjoying i remember on my season just simply at the end of the day uh when the when the sun would cool down just being in the group, for me, one of my biggest sources of happiness out there were two things. When we were like out in the group at the end of the day, when, you know, there's, you're not in a challenge, you're not preparing for a challenge, you're not having to go to tribal and you're just there. Um, and we were just hanging out, the group of us in this in the ocean, just to cool off. We're literally just sitting there like floating and, and, and talking and getting to know the people, mm-hmm. not not strategizing, not talking about the game, just like, relaxing even if it's just for two minutes that it lasted and the other thing was realizing and i remember saying it to my to my tribe to robin one night i'm looking up and i'm like wow look at these like amazing the stars we haven't even we've been so we deserved to feel distraught though because we were given those circumstances (laughs) Um, so i'm like you know we've been so distraught and and uh, you know starving and uh, and dehydrated on all that we haven't even stopped to like literally smell the roses and look at the mm-hmm. sky we haven't even noticed and taken in the stars and we're like oh my god you're right mm-hmm. it's amazing well, that we haven't even had a chance to do that you know it's interesting you bring that up too because that's another component with a faster paced game you don't have as many opportunities to have you know those genuine moments with people and are just being part of the land and getting to, you know, explore a little bit more. So Mm -hmm. do you think um, the players on this current season, I mean, even on the previous season with the 26 days, does that really impact how quickly you're not going to technically form, 
those deep connections or bonds or relationships with people? Uh, that's a good question. I, I'm, I'm, of course, I think that you take away time. Um, there's two sides to that. It could be good or bad because mm-hmm. one of the things that um, sometimes does get you into trouble is when you have all that downtime and sometimes for some people, it, you know, revealing more about yourself could be a detriment to you. So depending on you, again, depending on your personality, having less amount of time could be a good thing. Um, but if you're generally very likable and that's not an issue, then that could be detrimental because then you're, you're one of your tools to get ahead and be liked more and just got taken away, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. Cause as we began the show saying, I, I would have liked it to, you know, to be shorter <laughs> just because I know how grueling, uh, each of the days out there is like, you know, I was there for 15 days and it felt like the, four, the 30 days, it's at least, yeah. twice, they feel like twice as long, uh, as they, as they really are. You know, mm-hmm. so it's very interesting, uh, that way. Well, and you're on very brutal season in terms of not really having anything. And again, too, you also have to look at this piece. They can just go to the well and pour themselves water. Whereas oh my God. when you were playing, you had to go and boil your water, right? You, Lauren, I cannot believe you just said, I had that conversation. When I saw that, I literally lost it. I told my husband, I was like, oh no, they didn't. Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm like, what? Okay. I showed him, we had a well looking thing, a barrel. Our, on our season, we had a barrel. So it was like, I don't know if it was better or worse. We had this thing that looked like a barrel that was mm-hmm. about, came up, I'm, I'm five foot eight. And the, the top of the barrel came up to about here on me. Mm-hmm. So super tall. And it was just huge, huge. And it was filled with water. But when you looked at it, you could literally hear the amoebas talking to you. Nasty. Oh, so had, nice. to be, had to be boiled. So when I'm there, I, I see them, they're like standing there talking and, and then Jonathan's like dipping his thing in the, and I'm like, wait, what? and then I'm like, wait, what did he just do? Oh, no, they did. Wow. Because a huge part of the, of the grueling aspect for us was, you know, having to make fire without Flint, because if you remember my season, we got no Flint ever. Yeah. That was one of my biggest, I kid you not, like after doing the show, I would have like one of my biggest nightmares afterwards. I'd wake up hearing Jeff saying, I got nothing for you. I got nothing for you. I got, we, we never got Flint when we got sent back to camp. We had to, you know, figure it out yeah. um, and no, and you needed that fire. That's why I say fire is, is life out there. Mm-hmm. You needed that fire to be able to boil the water to have water. So that was a huge excruciating um, task that, you know, took up a lot of energy that at least in my season on Survivor Fiji, at least my tribe, Ravu, needed, would have liked to have that energy to be able to maybe perform better in the in the physical challenges. <laughs> it's, it's wild how much your hydration really gives you life. Tremendous because, you you know, we realized it specifically in our, uh, remember the memory challenge where we were like flipping mm. up, um, flipping up the cards and then you had to run out and go and memorize them. Yeah. Yes. And that's where we were like two places. We realized how dehydrated one was there when at least for me, it hit me like, oh dear, we are severely dehydrated here when Yao man, the brain of the tribe it can't remember something he literally just flipped 10 seconds before he flipped the card wow. turned it over turned to the right and we were over here going uh, you know from where we saw it, we could remember but he couldn't remember and how could we blame him because we knew how dehydrated that's when you realize like you need those electrolytes honey that are in that water to to make your brain function so and another uh, episode was when we had the what everybody calls the nasty food eating challenge. Mm. Oh yeah, and 
so Anthony was the first one from our tribe to, it was the first round of, of players. And he got a pig snout with mm -hmm. Papa Smurf. And when Anthony couldn't swallow it, as starving as we were, we were so excited. Can you imagine how excited Robbie was to get the food challenge? We didn't care <laughs> what it was that we were going to eat. So Anthony goes out first and he could not, he lost the, his round because he couldn't swallow the pig snout. And as he walked back, you know, his face was to us back to the camera. He says to us, you guys, good luck. You're going to find out you have no saliva to swallow. Mm -hmm. We were like, oh my God, that's right. And again, the water, the, the lack of, of hydration, of course it's going to affect you, you know? Right. I remember that too, because Papa Smurf was able to get that down really, really quickly. And water does play a huge factor with that because you're just not able to swallow. It's not from lack of trying or anything. It's just, if you can't swallow, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't realize those things until you're out there and they happen to you. And we didn't realize it until it was our turn. You know, like Anthony didn't think that was going to happen to him until he went out and did it. I was like, yeah. oh my God, guess what, you guys? You don't have, we don't have any saliva to, to swallow. I guess you maybe wished you had the uh, the smoothie one where they oh. blended all the stuff <laughs> No. I No. I, do you know what? What? I was so upset that I, um, I was going to go when I think Michelle went. And mm -hmm. I was so upset when I saw she got the fish eyes only because fish eyes are slimy. And I mm -hmm. thought, oh my God, that would have been heaven. That would have been that I would have been able to swallow because it's at least, you know, moist in some way. Oh, I, I'm telling you that, well, you know, it definitely, survivor will definitely make you appreciate the little things. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, did you ever think in your life you'd ever be saying, oh, I wish I could have had those fish eyes? I clearly <laughs> never. Clearly, yeah. only only being going through something like Survivor would make you say that. Um, and, and, you know, not just for those things, but, you know, being happy to find uh, sea snails that are not escargots, by the way. They're not like the big, beautiful, you know, gorged escargots that you get at a restaurant. They're like this. They're like the size of your pinky and they're, you know, pitch black. And you gotta gather at least a hundred of them for them to make it to basically fill maybe like five tablespoons of food that you yeah. eat. And still, you're like when you eat them, you're grateful. <laughs> like, <laughs> ah, and and some instances we were like sucking on the rocks because they were covered. They're beautiful visually, stunning. They're covered with um, with oysters. They're called oysters, o oyster rocks. And they're oh, yeah, yeah. stunning, you know, visually, but we also realized we thought, okay, yeah, great. We now we have like a, you know, a year's supply of oysters here. But when we try to pry them off the rock, we just crush the shell and completely ruin the flesh of the oyster. And we realized, you know, that's when you have to get a survivor mode. We remembered we had some nails from the first mm -hmm. days of building the shelter. And so we, started poking we we I, like i always say we sucked on rocks and what i mean is that we were, would poke holes on the in the oysters and suck the rock which was the oyster that was stuck to the rock to pull out the flesh from the oyster so you do come up with you know very creative and whatever ways yeah. that you can come up with to survive you know <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome this is exactly why i really enjoy whenever we have survivor guests on because we hear stories such as that that people like sarah and i haven't gone out and played mm -hmm. obviously and you don't know all the behind the scenes because we don't get shown that we talked about this you're only getting 42 minutes in an episode when there's hours and hours of footage out there. Right, right. Yeah, we mentioned that before we started how, at mm -hmm. least in my season, when the length uh, was the 39 days, it was 45 minutes of footage to in which was cut out from 72 hours of footage. So 72 hours had already gone by for, you know, 19 people. Wow. And they had to take those 19 people's lives, 72 hours of each of those and only give 
the, the viewers 45 minutes of those 19 lives and, and you know, 40, 72 hours. So you're only getting like two minutes out of, if you divide that by every person, it's kind of roughly, you're getting two minutes out of the 23 wow. hours and 58 minutes that, that you didn't see. You know, like I, the, the, the best um, illustration for me is I remember when we, the first night we had that tropical storm, mm -hmm. which lasted six hours. So I was really excited. It was the first episode, it, you know, immediately showing my family, like, look what mommy, you know, withstood the first night, massive Fijian tropical storm. <laughs> I'm in mean, my head going, oh my God, mm -hmm. here it comes. Cause I'm seeing the, here in the, thunder and lightning going it's it's coming wait for it and literally one minute later it was gone i'm like okay wait no okay wait wait okay pause let's rewind that lasted six hours yeah a minute we were there <laughs> from literally 11 o'clock at night until six in the morning soaking in that thunderstorm pitch black not being able to see whether the clouds were coming or going, how long it was going to last. And all they were able to air was a minute. Wow. You know? And so that gives you a perspective of how much, and you can't blame them. I was telling Lauren, like, you know, there's a lot of the, of the survivors that blame the editing, at least for me, because I work on television as a host mm -hmm. and, and producer and have to, had to edit. I'm like, Honey, whatever you were able to take and, and make, and I mean, you know, kudos to you, edit it however way you were able to, because I cannot imagine having that much footage and having to create something out of it, whatever came out of it. Yeah. Whatever, good on me or bad on me. <laughs> what, whatever works, you know? Well, um, and I think it's similar too. like, we don't see a lot of the footage. So when we see people like going out into the woods or finding, trying to find idols, you know, they're looking for way longer. So like even bringing us to like our next part of like the episode is when Drea and Romeo are going out and they're looking for the idol together, which yes. I thought was really cool that the two of them got together. Um, yeah, that's I wasn't awesome. sure how I felt about Drea previously, but I, um, She's grown on me a little bit this episode, for sure. Yeah, for me too. For me too. And then I have to say, that's kind of an interesting thing. Remember how before, and I have to say, I think it's before Mookie. I think Mookie and our mm -hmm. season, it was seen as, and he feels, uh, Mookie and I are very close. And I, I know he feels that one of his, uh, if I'm not mistaken, one of his biggest mistakes was to let, you know, share the idol, tell people yeah. that he found it. Because at least... For me, what I of what I knew of Survivor, that was one of like Survivor 101, number one thing to not do. Do not tell other people that you have the idol. At least that was in the old school days. And up until Mookie, I think Mookie was the first one to, for some reason, mm -hmm. for whatever he was going through, share it. And everybody just killed him for it, you know, and the, and the, as yeah. far as viewers, et cetera, because that was unheard of. And so it's interesting how now it's become kind of a team thing yeah. to do so or even just weird for me still i'd still be like you think that you want to you know that's that's a, a tool to save you and if you give it to someone in the game of survivor it mm -hmm. could be used against you well think Which about means, this yeah. we haven't talked about this yet but everyone on taku knows about marianne's phrase and what she had to do everyone on Vati nice. knows about nice, Mike. Right? And the only people that don't know about the activation of the idols, to my knowledge and the viewers, what we've seen thus far is Roxbury and Tori. So they don't know that Drea and Romeo found that. So they could be the only two people on the island right now that have no idea about the activation of those idols, which oh, I find so interesting going into the next phase of the game. Yeah, yeah. that is true because now they, that, um, they, that one power that it had got a limit or that one risk that it, they had now is eliminated, you know, once they made the verge, because that's why, that's why Drea didn't want to say anything. She's yeah. like, if I make it to this and I don't say anything, then I still, I, I keep my boat now and I have the idol. So it's going to be definitely interesting. It's going to make for one of those moments of, you know, uh, either blindside 
or some kind of surprise when when they do find out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I thought it was a clever little story that uh, mm -hmm. that he told about the soccer is a game of grace. And I thought it was going to just relate it to like, you know, this reminds me the game of Survivor, believe it or not, has a certain level of grace to it. Because, you know, I, I, I played soccer, I kind of related to that <laughs> being a game of grace. But I thought it was a little too bizarre for him to just out of the blue, you yeah. know, say it's, that phrase. <laughs> he said it at least three times, I think. And that made it even better because he's like, I want to make sure 100% this thing is activated. I'm like, Jeff, again, do you want to hear it one more time? Yeah, you only once would have activated. You're good. You're good. <laughs> I have to say though, my favorite phrase is definitely the potato one. Um, potatoes have skin. I have skin. Am I a potato? Like, I really just want to know who writes these. I, I'm going to assume that some people might not be sober while they're writing these. Right. I my assumption. Come up with these phrases. It's so funny. I know. <laughs> the very potato very one's my favorite. Good. That's the best. <laughs> yeah. The potato. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very funny. Um, yeah. Now, I wanted to kind of point out because I, as everyone knows, and I love, oh, one of the things I love the the uh, Survivor uh, admirers so much is that I actually got kudos and credit from, not from within the tribe, but again, from the Survivor viewers for having been the only one to write Earl's name down. And Earl, thank God, and I to this day are like a brother and a sister, and Aww. he understands my my reasoning behind it. Um, but I just related to when at the end I couldn't believe it when she wrote Mike's name down. And I was like, oh wow, there is a Chantel, is a little Miss Rita in the house, out of the blue, writing Mike's name down. That was so weird, so random. I wish I could have heard, you know, because you saw it in the end when they show who everybody mm -hmm. votes for. And I wish I could have heard, I only heard her, I only could read her lips saying, I'm sorry, Mike, and didn't understand her reasoning behind writing Mike's name down. I know I gave at least um, off, and maybe she will too. I was hoping in the like scenes coming up that we'd have that conversation where they, he, they would ask why, you know, Mike would ask, who wrote my name down and why, you know? Yeah, so this is the comment actually that kind of came up about um, where, so this comment did come up talking about your, um, talking about that. So um, thank you for your comment. Um, but, thank you, no. Ben Kailbrock. <laughs> and it's funnier, <laughs> that comment was written before you even brought it up. So oh, funny. it just makes oh, it I, even better. Well, I thought you saw it. it. <laughs> Love. No, I just saw that. So see, I'm glad because it shows that I am not a liar. I was aware that and I love, I love the uh, the fans respect uh, for that. Um, I've gotten a chance to explain my reasoning behind that. It it really wasn't a throwaway. I really put thought into it. I had um, observed it, in as much as I'm a talker in my line of work as a TV host and, you know, talk show things, I, I do have to be a good communicator, but I, I am forever grateful to Jeff uh, for, sir, he described me. I didn't know how he was going to describe me, but I'm so grateful to him. He described me as the listener and the ear of my tribe uh, and the nurturer, which I'm, again, I'm very, very touched and, and shocked. I'll tell you why I was be uh, also very very shocked with his very complimentary description of me but um i was observing that earl was a threat and nobody else seemed to, to see it for a lot of reasons i didn't it wasn't out of the blue it was you know he uh, he would disappear quite a bit and just a lot of things were adding up and nobody um interestingly enough as much as i would communicate for all different reasons um people wouldn't uh listen to me um, I, I, I don't know why they, I would try to give them, you know, advice in certain mm -hmm. things and they wouldn't listen to me. So I thought, well, if I kind of write it, spell it out for them and have them see it, it might make them wake up and smell the coffee. Watch out. Mm -hmm. Don't trust him. Um, you guys aren't listening to me. So maybe if you see it, it'll make me jolt you into, hmm, maybe there's, maybe we need to keep an eye on, on Earl. 
Mm-hmm. And, and again, I love the viewers and the followers because a lot of them also the response are saying like, wow, it turns out Rita was playing a much more intelligent game that anybody gave her credit for because she was the only one who predicted who the, the winner was going to be with that vote. I was trying to give you watch out. This is someone who is a threat. Um, they didn't and, listen to you, though. They didn't yeah. listen to you. They're they, like, oh, the name came up. No worries. He's fine. We'll keep him around. They didn't, they didn't, that, didn't, that didn't work. They didn't listen to me, you know, telling them. They didn't listen to me spelling it out for them. Uh, and unfortunately, it, it, it ended up uh, making them lose in the alliance that I had formed mm-hmm. with, uh, with Mookie and... Um, Earl and I didn't have, I was again, struggling to make an alliance uh, with him to try to make an alliance with him. But in my alliance with Mookie and Anthony, and uh, at that point that I'd had also with Rocky, it ended up affecting my alliance because they had decided we're going to vote for this. And I didn't follow their this, even though I explained Mm -hmm. to them my reasoning behind it. And then I, I don't know if it was in the last time I participated, but I explained how my mom of all people was the one with a brilliant, she said, as we were watching it, and again, this is another example of how important it is to be hydrated and um, and well-nourished. I have no regrets about not reacting this way because I sincerely, the thought didn't, if the thought had crossed my mind and I had chosen not to do it, then I would be like, darn it, I thought about doing that. Shit, why did I do it? I thought about it. But because I didn't even think about it, I can't regret it. And it, it's the following. When the episode airs and, you know, they show the scenes we're walking back to camp and Earl's asking, who wrote my name? Who wrote my name? And my mom says, Rita, you should have just told Earl that Sylvia wrote his name down. I mean, think about it. She's gone. Can he go and ask her? Can he go and confirm it? And after it's all over, Silly would have understood. She would have said, oh, my God, that was brilliant. That was so brilliant. It's hard when you're out there. And I'm like, Mom, wow. Like, literally, I (laughs) I could have had a V8. Literally. (laughs) I don't don't know if you're too young to understand that. No, no. no, I I got it. I got it. Commercial for a V8 juice that used to have. You'd hit your head on on the V8 and say, oh, Mm -hmm. I could have had a V8. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't even think I was like wow mom honestly I cannot even feel that's one thing I have no regret Mm, I can't feel bad about that that idea or thought I was so dehydrated didn't even cross my mind that would have been amazing that would have been amazing to say that you're right she's gone yeah and you know what I think I think anybody who goes into a game like that any of them um, I think you always look back and like, I could have done something different, but you know what, as long as you can go into afterward and be like, yeah, I could have, but you know what? I enjoyed my experience. I think that's all that matters. Cause at the end of the day, you've got a really cool experience. Oh no. Amazing. Uh, but my point being, you know, if you didn't think of it, you can't regret it. You can regret. There's a lot of stuff and you're right. For the most part, I think most of us have that coulda, woulda, shoulda and mm-hmm. hindsight thing for a lot of the things that we did think of doing and yeah. chose another way but absolutely for me at the end of the day that's the reason you guys are an example for me you are the value that has no price as to why i have no regrets and how yeah. grateful i am to have gotten the opportunity to be on you know i say this humbly but i think they've earned it to be on the most iconic uh reality show ever created and that's my family i say i don't say that lightly i say that with the deepest appreciation um talk about knowing that god loves me when he blessed me Mm -hmm. with being on something like this because again i get to be with you ladies that are Mm -hmm. so valuable to me i can't thank you enough for how you not just for having me on here for for your admiration and support and appreciation for, uh, you know, one of the most extraordinary experiences, but the reality is it's for a lot of it, for all of us that were on there, probably one of the hardest experiences of our lives to go through. So to get your appreciation, um, and this has a lot, once again, about this show and why I say it's, I believe it's iconic that, you know, I was on it uh, 2007, so that 14 years later, my experience is still has weight and worth. Uh, says a lot about 
you know, the importance and, and the value of this of survivor. Yeah, and it's come Absolutely. so far. And I, th- and I think too, like you were talking a little bit about regret and kind of segueing back to the episode a little bit is, you know, you know why I think regret something? Omer, I think he regrets doing that puzzle. Oh, bit <laughs> Volunteering for that because that was, whew, that root. Well, the reward slash reward right. challenge, really. Oh um, my gosh. And that was with, with Tori help trying to help him I as know, much as possible. But, you know, thank God, thank God that it ended the way it did, because otherwise it would have been a really big, really huge regret. Um, another thing that's coming to mind is now we're fast forwarding to the tribal council. Um, I always get so frustrated when people, because to me, that's a number two no, no, when you've done something wrong, don't remind everybody. Mm. <laughs> yes, I do. I do think that's really, really important. Um, don't. Yeah. Just don't. So when they're, you know, when they were at tribal and it's like reminding them of the bad things that they did and, and especially yeah. at tribal, I mean, it's fine if you do that, like at the beginning of like after, right after the challenge, mm-hmm. maybe you blurt it out really quickly. Just don't mention it the whole rest of the day. So <laughs> let, other, let other things yeah. happen, let people forget it. Because when you're out there, you, we only remember the thing that just happened because we don't have enough, you know, memory uh, to remember anything that happened an hour before that. Oh, but yeah. you're at tribal, whatever you're saying at tribal, it's like, that's it. That's all they're going to remember. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. earlier we had Daniel reminding us all why he wasn't going to win Survivor 42. So, I mean, he absolutely put it out there on the table for everyone to hear. And people were saying, hmm, if you have no confidence in yourself that you can win to this my thing. Point. To my point, you just don't want to bring attention to any, any negative you're just giving people the rope to hang you with they're like oh okay, <laughs> you, you're, yeah. you know what lauren it'd be interesting to see that possibly at the beginning of that tribal council they weren't fully leaning that way because as you know i don't know if you if you you, you ladies probably know because you've, you've gotten to interview so many uh participants but those tribals at least in my season mm-hmm. our tribal councils would, would last at least at least four hours because yeah. I remember I I caught like a, a, I was able to catch kind of a glimpse at one of the PA's watches on our way to tribal mm-hmm. to see what time they would start at. And they would head, we would head over there at about, it was about in the evening, early evening, about 6.30. And actually they were, they were kind to explain to me why the timing, they said, actually a lot of the timing of why we do it at this time is because we get such beautiful, and this is kind of a back thing I'm just remembering right now that maybe nobody knows. But one of the reasons they're held at that time is because he said where they're built, where the tribal councils are built, are usually one of the most scenic areas of the island. And that's the time of day where they get one of the most beautiful uh, shots cinematography wise. And so, you know, the shots of you guys, that's somebody explained, one of the PAs explained that to me um, after, I think at our finale that, you know, the shots that we are able to get of you guys filing into tribal council when the sun is setting is gives us, you know, cinematography wise, some of the most beautiful images. And that's why we do it at that time. So, you know, we're there, the sun is just barely going down. And when we leave, it's like pitch, pitch black. And it's about four hours uh, it takes. And again, it's kind of like that tropical storm that lasted a minute on the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, tribal lasts, you know, what, four minutes, I think, on the screen. And it's literally yeah. four, four Give hours. Or take. And it's literally the, the true length of it is four hours that you're there. And, and you don't take into account how grueling we're in front of that fire. It's I, I always got sat on the front row with that fire burning right in front of you. And I mean, it was in four hours like that. By the end of that, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to be like Jonathan, you know, fanning into the, into the fire. <laughs> yeah. So interesting you bring up the length of time with Travel Council, because I am curious to know how long does it actually take once y'all start voting for you to go and vote, them mm. to tally the votes and then come back and read them? Oh, okay. Yes. See, that tally part takes at least an hour. We're, we're literally, and you're sitting there kind of pretty much in silence 
oh. you can talk to each other, but it's such a tense moment at that point that we were just mm-hmm. sit there like barely talking to each other and just, you know, it, it's not really paranoid anymore because all the votes have been cast, but literally waiting, it, it felt like about an hour, at least 40, at least 45 minutes, at least. Because think okay. about it, they're back there setting them up in a manner that's most dramatic to then read the votes. And so they're figuring out which order would be the most dramatic way. Sometimes it's easy when it's like, a you know, when everyone's voted for the same person, then it's a quicker return. Mm-hmm. Um, but and yeah, anticipating really, whether or not someone can play an idol too, because you would have to structure mm-hmm. the votes in that particular way as well. That. And sometimes someone's going to play it and they're not going to play it. So you have to run through those scenarios too. Mm. Totally. So it's, it's a, they do a brilliant job. I mean, on all ends, I, I give kudos to how they, cause they achieve that. You know, we always get that dramatic read uh, of those votes, but it takes at least an hour. Another thing, I don't know if it's the same now, but at least in my season, the amount of cameras that they have out there, that was really even for even you know i'm i'm in this line of work and when i walked in and it was like almost like a red carpet paparazzi amount of photographers for each tribal council and they explained because for each um for each survivor they needed at at least three cameras because they want to get they want to be sure that they don't miss any of our reactions mm. but that's why you guys get we get every single you know eyebrow lift or you know uh whatever every every facial expression they capture because they have three cameras on you to make sure that from the left from the front from the other side they they captured it so that was really really sh- kind of shocking to see wow the amount of cameras that that are there for tribal, but that's the reason behind that, at least in my, in my season. (laughs) Interesting. So thinking about tribal, I actually have an interesting question for you, Rita and Lauren. Um, If you were stuck, because I think, I mean, we know that there's been a couple, I did the recap on Wednesday um, with, with Dan and Matt, and we talked a little bit about this, but I'm curious of what both of your um, responses to this would be out of Chanel and Daniel. Who would you have wanted to get voted out? And well, I I think I would go along with Kai's um, reason, or re- at least his original reason for wanting Chanel out. That he felt she was playing both sides, and for that reason, she wasn't trustworthy. And because trust is the number one thing that you at least are trying to somewhat get a a tiny sand of that for the people that you're in in alliance with or playing with. So I think that if you sense that from someone, um, that lack of loyalty or, you know, trustworthiness, that would be a really easy reason uh, to vote someone off. Whereas again, at least with Daniel, um, I felt like he was trying uh, to play as much as he was able to uh, he's not dumb. He's again, he's trying to last even just physically, uh, as much as he can. And, mm-hmm. and he's been smart enough to get the support from the tribe members to be able to do that. Uh, mm-hmm. he seems to also have been made, makes efforts to play the social game, uh, and communicate, uh, to each and every player, uh, within, you know, whatever the honesty level that he is trying to communicate. Um, so I, that's why I think I would have, I would have probably gone with, uh, I was shocked. Okay. Yeah. What do well, you think, Lauren? That's the thing. There's pros and cons to both. I mean, the way that I look at it with this is you have Daniel who going in, you don't, they obviously don't know exactly when they're going to merge, but you have Daniel who would be a very loose cannon for you and spill so much information. But again, most of that information is technically already out there anyway, as we talked about with the idle scenarios. Other thing with Daniel, pro to keeping him would be he's not going to do well probably in individual immunity challenges at all because he's injured. So that's another person you don't necessarily have to worry about can get rid of them technically whenever you want because they're probably not going to win anything. I mean, they can surprise you. That's a great – that would be, I think, when Kai was having that conversation about like, look, we're carrying – that's, I think – if, if I would have been hydrated enough at that point, I would have said, yeah, but you know what? You want to keep him because he is weak like that. Because if the immunity and the individual ones, guess what? Bingo. You're, I think Chanel's a gamer. 
That's what I think too. So I think she's going to be able to navigate herself potentially through the merge and create connections and bonds because she realizes now, okay, these might not necessarily be my people because A, I got two votes on that round and B, she knows that she's on the bottom. So I think we're going to see a lot of mixing and mingling amongst people because people on other tribes know where they stand as well. So this merge coming up, I know it's not going to be a merge. Technically, they're going to have a weird twist with it. Yeah. But we're going in four, four, four. So it, there's a lot of maneuvering that's going to happen yeah. with this. Yeah. That's I, so, like, I fully agree with both of you, but I think for a different reason. So, I definitely would have taken Chanel out. Um, I, if I'm looking at both of them, Chanel actually scares me. Daniel doesn't. I think Daniel is very, he's desperate. He's going to do what you need. And I would have been like, Hey, Daniel, you want to be my person? Come here and take yeah. him under my wing and pretty much have him do what I want him to. And then, you know, if he's going to be a loose cannon, maybe I'll tell him something wrong. So he says something wrong and right. <laughs> he'll be an easy vote at some point. Right. But also, who's going to vote for him in the end with how much he's done? Nobody. Absolutely. Well, speaking of Daniel, I, he at Tribal, um, I, one thing I did not agree with him at all is his finally when he realized he had he did have an analogy after all. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. His, you know, the Muhammad Ali analogy. Yeah. Like I didn't agree with that at all. How he was saying it sounded good, you know, he was saying, Oh yeah, if you're a boxer, you're not gonna just go out and box when you're not in the ring. So if you lie when you're here, that doesn't mean you're a liar in general. You know, I, I really beg to defer with that because, again, I think I mentioned it earlier in the podcast that it, you're I really do think that you are uh, you're your true nature out there is what what survivor brings out in you. How do you react? That's really your essence. That's your true nature. And um, and even if it isn't, sadly, uh, the viewers are seeing what they think is and and I have to clarify this the circumstances the environments the environment is very much a, a reality those you know they, they are not messing with the uh, environment the producers that's it is the grueling stuff that there no food all that stuff all those elements are true to nature true to the reality but what you're viewing the people also to that point becomes the your reality that yeah. you think of them. And, and a great example of that, I, I don't think I'm I'm explaining that as clearly as I want to. And the, I think the best way to do is with an example. Uh, coach, uh, who I also became good friends with, was telling me how much he regretted uh, this dragon slayer character that he created uh, when he was out there. He said, you know, I um, regretted it because a lot of it was you know, created for that shock value. And mm -hmm. when all of it was said and done, he came back to his, you know, ironically to his real world. And the people were like, who is that? Who are you? Like they, his own family and friends were like, we don't even know who you are anymore because they really mm -hmm. believed what they saw so much so that he got fired from his job as a, a girl soccer coach, because they're like, wow. we don't even know now. We can't have someone who even could remotely act like that. Even if it was pretend uh, being an example for these young girls as a soccer coach. So wow. it can affect, it really can affect um, your, how you, when you go back to your reality in your real world, um, and, and he was very kind. He said, I really commend you for, you know, sticking to your integrity. And, and, um, and I told him, I said, you know, they, on, on a very superficial female level, they wanted me and they saw me because they, they're very kind to say I looked a lot younger than my age. And so at the time, at the time, back in 07, it was when that whole cougar phrase had just come out. It was like the thing the milk and the cougar thing. I didn't even know what the heck that was, but I happened to have, you know, been going through divorce. So I was single that made me single and I was a single mom and they were very sweet. Oh my God, you look so much younger than you are. And 
So they wanted me very much to play up that what they felt I looked, I looked like this cougar thing. Mm-hmm. And first of all, I, that wasn't me. I'm like, uh, that wasn't me. I'm not the older woman who is needs to, or tries to get together and devour the younger men thing. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, very clearly had this, who I am, I'm not going to go out there and even for pretend, pretend to do that because my two children, mainly my two children, I know the adults in my family, I could explain to them what the choice I might've had to make, but how do you explain that to your children, your mom acting like that? Mm -hmm. And then I'm, and I'm so thankful on so many levels, again, why I stayed true to my integrity. And maybe that explains to people, maybe how I wasn't, um, you know, as out there as they had wanted me to be. And I'm so glad I didn't, because honestly, I didn't even know at the time how young the survivor fan base can get. Mm -hmm. And honey, when I came back and I went back to my, my, you know, real life of being a mom and my TV work and the Mm -hmm. next that in that following week, I was doing what I always did before. I was a volunteer in my kids' middle school uh, lunchroom, in their elementary school lunchroom. Mm -hmm. And I was shocked. That's when I realized like, oh my God, two things like, oh my God, the survivor base of watchers is so young. And thank God I didn't do the whole cougar thing that they wanted me to do because I'm walking through the lunchroom and all the kids are like, oh my God, you're that lady that was that us on Survivor. Aren't you that lady who's on Survivor? I was like, <laughs> what? Aww. You know that? And they're like, you know, eight year olds. So imagine yeah. the the repercussions. All uh, the the psychiatrist appointments I would have had to had my poor children Aww. with them with their friends calling their mommy. You know, oh, your mom's a hoe. Your mom, did. you know, kids can be so mm-hmm. vicious. They can be, and, yeah. So that's another reason I I was I'm so glad I was able to and again I credit really my my faith in God how my parents raised me um, that I just was like I can't it's not worth a million dollars if I don't win it here God will give me the the blessing of winning it in another way where I can sleep at peace at night so <laughs> exactly and I think I think that's true you have to go in the way you want to go and I think that I do think that there's kind of like we know those the archetypes of survivor and all of that but i think there's like two major players and it doesn't really have to do with like style but it's the people who go in very genuine as who they are and it's the people who go in as the player because i do believe that there are some people who go in more as the player and are like this is like we kind of saw it last season with shan who shan's like i'm playing as this i don't get to do this in real life so i'm gonna play this way yeah and yeah yeah so and you have that choice I think that's kind of cool yeah um And you see, you see it all the time. And that's the thing too, like with Chanel at least and um, Tori, actually, I got corrected uh, last time I said this, but there are people that are in the online community. So they, they play a different way too. So it's actually really interesting to see that on screen. Um, So I think they are going in as more of the player versus like who they, the persona, I guess. And you have that choice. And I remember, you know, the producers telling you, you have the, you, you can choose what you want to put out there. You can choose what you don't want to say, what you want to do, who you want to be. Um, I remember my season, for example, um, Liliana got really mad back to the whole cougar thing. I didn't even know this was actually happening around me that the, those conversations were going on. Cause again, in those first few days we were all lost, literally floating around all over. And um, later on when we were all settled in our tribes, I come to find out that, you know, Liliana was really, really upset because um, apparently all the younger guys were being very complimentary and flattery and, and talking about you. Mm-hmm. And she was, and she said that you were not to believe you, that you were not as old as you say you are and that you, there's no way that you had children that that was, that was a game that you were playing. That was the persona you were building because you were very smart and mm-hmm. you were creating that to try to, you know, woo and seduce these young guys to be in, an, in alliances with you and that you didn't have children. And that in fact, she's the one. So she, they told me this and then that she's the one that actually had a child. And she told them, by the way, I have a son. Da, 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 da. And, uh, and I had no reason not to believe that. 
Mm -hmm. um, and so when I'm off the, I, she, uh, I got voted off before I did. So she was there when I got voted off and she had found out in the time that I was still playing the game and she was out that in, in fact, actually she still didn't know because she had convinced everybody that I was lying, that I didn't really didn't have kids. So when oh. I came the first thing she came running up to me, she's like, oh my God, oh my God. So tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. So I don't believe you. I think you were lying. You were, you don't have kids. There's no way that, you know, that you have kids or whatever. And I'm like, I was, and I was bawling because just at that point, I'm so, uh, the yeah. emotion, like I, the first thing I thought about was, was my kids when I stepped off mm -hmm. the island. Because I purposely, by the way, blocked them out as much as I could during the time I was out there. Because every time I thought about them, I was a hot mess. I started having like, oh my God, just so mm -hmm. missing them so much. And it really affects you. You're so, you know, again, back to the dehydration, no food, and it, you're, you're much more emotional. So she just comes at me and I said, um, actually, come with me. So I take her to my little tent. And I couldn't wait to, I lost it. This is the first time I saw my kids after, you know, the whole Aww. time after I pull out my little backpack and I pull out their two little pictures and I just started bawling. I'm like, oh, look, these are my two. You know, I lost it because I couldn't believe at least I could see them. It just brought out all that emotion in me. And she was like, oh my God, Rita, I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> I thought you were lying. And she don't know what I did. Do you know, oh my God, when this thing airs, do you know what? I totally lied because I was so pissed at you and I thought you just made it up. And then she had me show her my age. I'm like, showed her my passport. She's like, oh my God, dude. I'm so sorry. I totally thought you were just completely making it up. I told everybody you lied. And in fact, I told everybody that I had a son. Rita, I don't have a son. I I was I have a nephew. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's wild. That's oh, crazy. But that's you. You have the choice to, you know, yeah. do whatever you think is going to, you know, make you win ahead, win. Some people, like you said, play the game. Some people decide to to be honest and, and be themselves. And I think that's uh, one of the million dollar questions. I think I just touched mm -hmm. upon it. One of the million dollar questions for me, I, I touched upon it, highlighting the comment that Daniel made about like, you know, just because you're a boxer on the ring doesn't mean that you're boxing when you're out of the ring. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the million dollar question for me for Survivor is, is it just a game? I think that's the million dollar question that the producers ask. Is it really just a game or is it reality? Interesting. Well, I mean, it is reality TV. <laughs> <laughs> So but that's, you know. that's why it makes it so complicated because yes, it is reality TV, but then people do have a choice to, to choose what reality um, they want to choose. But that's why I want to really clarify that it's only, that only applies to the people, not to the surroundings. They, mm -hmm. there's not, they cannot manipulate. Um, in fact, you saw it in today's episode. I even, I think it was coming out of the water, uh, the little water barrel, the snake that was, coming out of the water barrel. And so I'm telling you, there's realities that they, they can't manipulate that, you know? Yeah, no, they can't. And so, and it, it kind of gives you that taste of, oh, they really are out there. Because even today, I still hear fans say, oh, it's all scripted, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh my God, <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, and hearing that and then hearing like your story and other people's stories, it's one of those no. uh, wild I remember things. in the first hours, people, um, that, actually in the first days when I came back uh, home and people would ask one of the questions that I was like, wait, how? They're, they're, they're like, so Rita, what do you guys do like when the commercials are on? Oh, what? Oh. Come on. <laughs> Where? Um, we, we just sit there and stare at each other. <laughs> <laughs> That's a unique like, question to ask somebody. Like, so all the time. I got asked that all the time. So yeah, so wow. like when the commercials going on, I was like, well, do you guys know that we don't have TV sets out there? Like we're not really watching <laughs> it. And then I'm like, no, the cameras are on there 24 seven. You wake up and you have a camera and you a <laughs> red green camera in your face. And the commercials are like added after it's all over so we don't we don't get a, any breaks there's a hundred percent 24 7 
the filming us. The only time that they don't film us, and even then, sometimes they'll, you still find them following you around, and you're like, "Okay, wait, I thought you said that when I was alone that we weren't going to get filmed because they told us they, they were, were, the only time we're not going to film you is when you're walking alone um, mm-hmm. because we want to hear." you know, banter, we want to hear the alliances, the the conversations between each other. So if you're alone, we're going to assume that unless you've really lost it, you're not really going to be talking to anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, with the exception of Shane, of course, who who talked to a rock thinking it was his Blackberry. Shane, uh, yes. Uh, that was, was a, that, that was a, that was a great yes, moment. Yes, that- which can happen. He was, you know, texting and emailing on his Blackberry. So unless that's happens usually they're not going to film you when you're alone because they're going to assume that you're walking alone because you got to you have to go to the bathroom so Mm -hmm. that that was something they told us and they at least in my season they stayed true to that if you were alone they would not uh follow you but the Mm -hmm. rest of the time 24 7 you had a camera that was on and there was no commercial breaks (laughs) You know what you should have said to those people that asked that question? You should be like, listen, why don't you go find out what we do during the commercials? Just yeah, say for yourself. And let and come back and tell me. Come yeah, back. exactly. Come back and tell me exactly what happens during these commercials. I must know. You're like, I forgot, actually. So <laughs> yeah. if it enlighten me and uh, jog my memory, that'd be great. But isn't that funny? When I first heard that, I was like, okay, wait, I'm sorry. I don't think I understand your question. What oh. commercials? Well, aren't you guys... You know, like you know, when the sh- when the show is going on and then the commercials come on, I'm like, well, we're. I mean, we're. I'm doing like when the show's on. I think I'm doing the exact same thing you're doing while you're watching the show. When the commercial is on, I go <laughs> and maybe you know uh, go to the bathroom or whatever. But when we're out there, we don't have any commercials. What do you mean? And then they were. It made them realize like, oh, oh yeah, oh okay, yeah, that's right. You guys aren't watching it out there i'm like no it's, it's you know it's happening out there oh, that is I just, amazing i love I, that. I love i love hearing all this because you know we don't get to hear it all the time everyone has their own unique story every yeah. survivor player that goes out and so mm-hmm. when we bring y'all on the podcast we're hearing something different each and every time which yeah. i find so interesting yeah. but i do have to ask you for this season who is your winner pick um, I am going to, at this point, go with Jonathan. Jonathan. Okay. Okay. I think he is, um, because he made, you know, as we know, he's that strong player that you want to keep physically strong player that you want to keep on when you're in that first half. Mm-hmm. So the fact that he made it to that merge which is when you don't want to have him anymore. So now you do have someone really strong physically that you are going to have to try to beat. That's going to be, I think he's going to be a hard one. Depending on the challenges though. Yes. Depending on the challenges. Also because usually, and that was another thing when we were like, you know, prepping, um, when they were making us watch, I sound like they literally physically prep you, which is something that was interesting to me. I thought that in the two weeks where we're kidnapped to do all these interviews, yeah. I thought, honestly, I kid you not. I thought, oh my gosh, they're going to be have, they're going to have us do these like circuit training things every day to like train for two, the next two weeks to be ready for survivor. And that was not, not that that's when I realized it was a mental game because it was mainly um, like psychological tests. And of course, interviews with the producers, that was it. There was not one, the only physical test we got was the medical physical. No no testing of your physical abilities at all. And that's when I realized like, hmm, interesting. This is really more of a mental game. And I actually feel that those physical challenges, yes, they're there for you to try to have a a way to win food and make it farther in the game. But I think the number one reason, in my opinion, that they're there is a psychological reason. I think that they are a, um, an anxiety and a release. They're a tool that they use to, to give us a way to, to, get out of our system all that paranoia that, that gets built up um, with all, you know, because of how the game of Survivor is, you have all this paranoia that if you don't have a place to release it, it could be very detrimental. And the physical challenges, you know, force you, give you a, a venue, an outlet for yeah. you to 
cleanse yourself and then, okay, now recharge. I'm, I'm ready to go back and, and be able to handle more paranoia. Um, <laughs> the, I really, really believe that that's why those physical challenges are, are there. Uh, because again, in those two weeks that we were there, it was all about, you know, uh, keeping certain basic rules. Of, of course, everyone who is usually who gets cast on this is more of a type A personality. Mm -hmm. And with that comes a lot of, you know, you are comfortable as a public speaker and you're comfortable talking. And a huge test was being being able to hold a gag order uh, during those <laughs> few weeks. And all of those, all of us who made it on there were able to do that, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really, really interesting, all the, all the uh, elements that go into playing this one-of-a-kind game. Absolutely. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how the rest of the season shakes out, for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, we'll touch base with you to actually yes. see if your prediction with it's Jonathan is in indeed yeah. correct there. But Rita... Thank you so much for coming on the podcast with yes. Sarah and I. You have been such a delight. And I would oh, honestly love to have you come back if you would like to. I would. Point. Like, I can only do this with one hand. But if I had more, if I was talented enough, I, that means lots of yes, yes, yes. Okay. Love, love, <laughs> love, 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 love. This is, I'm imitating something that you hopefully don't remember. But this is basically what they did with my lips on the uh when, oh, the lip gloss. <laughs> when i yep. made the lip gloss comment and i shared this with sarah and i think on the last mm -hmm. uh, interview that one yep. day i'm walking by my screen and i see my lips floating on the screen and i'm saying lip gloss lip gloss lip gloss lip gloss and that was how they edited for next week on survivor <laughs> a little girl talk and i'm like what i was um, and that and that's actually a great point is there's a lot of other shows on SFW and one of them is my show, the mind after the game. And I did have Rita on there so you can watch her episode and hear a lot of this stuff, but also some other stories that, you know, also about your discovery. And I think that's, so please watch that. And you can see how oh, Rita was discovered for the game of survivor um, and what she yeah. feels like brought her through the game. Um, also on Wednesdays, we do have Brent and Bobby covering Big Brother. We yeah. also have Johnny and Matt and Alex. Sometimes it switches up depending on availability for the recap of the episode directly after the episode. You right. have me and Lauren doing Ladies Night. And you also have Alex Rubino. And I'm singing this song in my head. <laughs> I know you were so hyped about the intro. I said, I'm here for it. <laughs> But they do the deep dive. So you can watch the deep dive. And that happens throughout the week. There's not a specific time for it. So before we go, I, how can I forget? I wore this little number, especially for everybody. This is the authentic T-shirt that they gave us in 2007 when we went to Ooh. our uh, Survivor Fiji reunion. And this was the, this is the authentic Survivor Fiji. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. That's awesome. That oh, no, they gave us. <laughs> yay that's so cool that, oh, yeah. that's neat yeah they gave us a little a, a packet with um our buff and um this t-shirt and i forget what else oh, i think a dvd of mm -hmm. the season but this is the original one if i could show you the it's it's really neat it's like the authentic from the cbs uh survivor store uh, oh, there in New York City because my my reunion was there in New York. So with that, I thank you all again, and I want to take advantage to thank everybody, all of your viewers, all of your followers. Thank you so much for all the love, the support, the admiration. I cannot tell you uh, how it inspires me, how grateful I am, how I thank God for all of you. You guys are a huge blessing uh, to me. And, um, I just hope to keep doing you proud and, and we'll see hopefully my Jonathan prediction, but as we know, Survivor is unpredictable. So you mm -hmm. never know. And of course, last but not least, I want to thank these two beautiful, amazing, intelligent ladies, Miss Sarah and Miss Lauren. Thank you so, so much for reaching out to me and you always, honey, always count on me for whatever, uh, for ever presentation you have so thank you and wishing you all and everybody in your family's continuous blessings as i say in spanish besitos y bendiciones which means kisses and love and blessings
Oh, thank you so much, Rita. It means so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank, thank you so soon. much again. See you soon. Yes. Take Thanks. care. And with that, everyone, good night. Good night. Adios. And for more reality NSFW content, visit adfreenSFW.com.